You're watching BBC Choice Digital Television from the BBC. But if you can't tell your EPGs from your DTTs, worry not, because the Tomorrow's World team is here to explain. Hello and welcome to the future, the digital future. Stand by for our trusted guide to the world of digital television, a world that nobody knows better than techno whiz Lindsay Fallow. Small but perfectly informed. For the first time you're tuned into the TV technology of the future, it means better reception and clearer pictures, but a whole lot more besides. Indeed, we'll be showing you the way in which digital television will transform the way we watch television. It's a confusing world, the world of digital, full of mumbo jumbo and strange technology. So we'll be sweeping away the jargon and revealing the facts. Plus, I'll be helping one family take the Tomorrow's World Digital Challenge. Can they set themselves up with digital television in their own home for the first time? We'll also be looking at the way digital television allows you to interact with your TV. For the first time, you'll be choosing the programmes you want to watch when you want to watch them. No more couch potatoes. And we'll be chatting to DJ Kevin Greening about how the digital revolution could change the face of entertainment. But first, what are the questions you have about digital television? Lindsay has the answers. I'm on London's Totten Court Road, surrounded by electronics retailers just dying to flog you the latest kit and get you to go digital. The thing is, are we all digital savvy or are we still trying to sort our bits from our bikes? Uh, I do, well yes, what is digital television? Good question, what is digital television? Well, to find out, I've come to the home of BBC Digital Television. This is where Digital BBC One, Digital BBC Two and of course BBC Choice are transmitted from. This is the Choice office in here. Now, the real difference between analogue television and digital television is in the way that the information which makes up the television picture is stored and then moved. With analogue television, we turn that information and that picture into a wave. And the problem with this is that when we transmit the wave, it can get distorted like this. Which means that the wave that reaches you and the information isn't quite the same shape as the wave that left here. Bring on the digital because with digital television, even if it gets distorted like this, as long as the numbers and the order of those numbers that reach you are exactly the same, then the picture you get home is every bit as good as the picture that left here. So what's so good about digital TV? Well, for starters, you won't get any of this. It's called ghosting and it's really annoying. And it's happening because my aerial up there is picking up the direct broadcast analog signal and a reflection which is coming off of that building there. That's called interference. And you don't get it with digital television, which is great because your receiver can tell the difference between the original signal broadcast and any reflections. No interference, no ghosting, better pictures, better sound. Is it the same as satellite? Not really, no, because digital television is going to be available in three forms, which are satellite, terrestrial and cable. This is Crystal Palace, one of dozens of transmitter towers around the UK. It's been transmitting ordinary analogue signals for ages, but now it's transmitting the digital signals as well, coming from those strange pod-like things on the top of the tower. This is the transmitter that's pumping out analogue BBC One. It's 80 kilowatts of greasy, chunky, steam-cooled 1960s engineering. And this is the digital equivalent. Now, all over the country, transmitters are being upgraded with neat little boxes like this. Once the digital terrestrial network is complete, you'll be able to pick up up to 30 different channels, some of them free and some of them on subscription. Another option is digital satellite. Now this will allow you to receive at least 200 different channels. And just like normal satellite, you need a dish pointed in the right direction to be able to receive it. Now this is the BBC's dish, but fortunately, you can make do with one that's a little bit more modest. The final option for some is digital cable. Now whether or not you can get this depends on your local cable operator, but more and more cable companies are going digital. The real key is that whichever method you choose, be that terrestrial, satellite or cable, 
You also need a bit of kit to interpret the signal for your television. Unfortunately, at least at first, these don't look like they're going to be interchangeable. Well, now this is what Lindsay's talking about. This is the stuff you need at home to receive digital television. The first is a typical digital terrestrial television receiving setup. There's the set-up box, the thing you have to pay for. On top of your ordinary television set, you don't have to change that for the moment. Uh, and your aerial, ordinary set-top aerial like this, or the one on the roof should do perfectly well. If it's one of those rusty old coat hangers, it's probably worth changing that. And in some regions, you may need to have a wide band aerial to receive a wider range of frequencies. So that's digital terrestrial. Another way of doing digital terrestrial is to have this socking great new integrated television set for digital, but it is very expensive. It probably will come down in price, but it does have the bonus of the widescreen thrown in. More about that a bit later on. Now, digital satellite television. Well, here's the set-top box, a different one, of course, for satellite. They're all different, all three different, uh, and you have to pay for that as well. The dish is half the size of the existing dish, but this dish will receive uh, free channels, BBC channels, Channel 4, Channel 5, not at the moment planned to pick up Channel 3 ITV. And finally, digital cable television. Again, set-top box. This is different to the other ones, but you should get this on your subscription. Now, existing cables should work perfectly well for most people, but in some areas they may have to be upgraded. So, what did it all cost? A digital terrestrial set-top box will cost around £200, plus a monthly subscription which will start from under £10. An integrated set will cost at least £1,000, but nothing else to pay for the free channels. A satellite system will cost £200 for new subscribers with subscriptions from £6.99 a month. Cable prices will be similar to analogue cable, around £15 per month. So, having forked out your hard-earned cash, just how difficult is it to get it all to work? We find out as our pioneering family take up the challenge. At the end of the day, this is what it's all about. Inside this box is the magic piece of kit we need to receive a digital terrestrial transmission. But just how difficult is it to tame the technology? We find out as the Omissori family take up our challenge. Right, guys, are you ready to be our guinea pigs? What you have here yes, for you, this is one of the very first prototype set-top boxes that actually works. It gives you an idea of what digital television is all about. So how much do you already know about digital television? Not a lot. Not a lot? Any of you guys? No. Yes, I do. I don't know anything. <laughs> but you know that it's coming. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to let you guys loose on this and see whether or not you can get it to That's work. Not, right. right. Who's in charge? Me. She can be in charge. Yeah. <laughs> you're in charge. Toby can be in charge. You know. Toby can be in charge. Okay, yeah. Toby, you're in charge. Take it away, guys. Yes. The task for the Omisori family is to tune into the digital terrestrial test signals being beamed from the Crystal Palace. <laughs> Is this electrical adapter, yeah? Is that from you? Yes. Hope we get the signal. Cool. A moment of truth. Ah, oh, wow. Well. Yes. Wow. <laughs> well. Wicked. Right, well, let's have a look at exactly what we've done here to make it all work. I'm hugely impressed. Yeah. So we've got a SCART cable yeah. that's going into the back of your television just like you'd run it from your video. Yeah. And then we've got the normal antenna, this is coming down from your from rooftop me. aerial. Yep. And that's going into the antenna input on the back of there and you got it plugged in and that's it. So what do you think about the picture? It's clear. It's clear. Mm -hmm. Good reception. Mm -hmm. It is a pretty good picture, isn't it? Do you think all the people look a bit tall and skinny? Yeah, they do actually. Yeah. You're right actually, I wasn't really thinking about that, but they... I know that those things are usually quite long, isn't it? But they seem quite a bit longer. Than I know, they look, they look extremely tall and skinny. I think that might be because it's being broadcast in widescreen. We're watching it on a normal, normal TV. Screen. Right, let's see, then, if you can work out how to get it in widescreen. Should we go for installation? Installation. Type of connected TV, right? We're not watching on a 16 by 9 We're watching on a 4x3. Ah. Oh, the Queen looks kind of normal now, doesn't she? Instead of a bit tall and stretched out. I think, actually, I'd quite like to be broadcast in widescreen on a normal television. Let me look taller and thinner. So, guys, you seem to have been fairly successful. In fact, very successful. How difficult was it? To plug it all in. It yeah. was pretty easy. Quite just easy? As, yeah, just as easy as putting the video on. Straightforward? Yeah. yeah. You can't open your mouth, can you? Yeah, it is straight. 